Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Thompson of Talga Resources. How are you today, Mark? Good, thanks, Tracy. Well, allow me to start by congratulating you on your announcement with Shemital. I understand your stock is moving rapidly on the news. Can you give us some highlights, please? Uh, sure. Shemital is a subsidiary of BSF, which is one of the world's, uh, I guess, tier one uh, global um, coatings and uh, chemical giants. And so this is a very significant group to allow essentially us to go public with a relationship with them and uh, what follows quite a long um, sample re sampling regime. So, yeah, we're commercializing some products. Uh, we have a product development uh, deal with them. And that seems to be the last building block of people in people's minds about the commerciality of graphene. Well, yes. Yeah, so and let's take that a step further. I actually read that you're looking at having uh, revenue by Q2 of this year. Is that correct? And can you tell us just a little bit more about that? Uh, sure. So the, it, it, even though it's a sample uh, development, or I should say a product development um, agreement, um, Shemital have agreed to, to buy the material from us during that, that program. So that will provide some some income to Talga, obviously um, very small at first and then hopefully growing throughout the, the length of the agreement and then there'll be a separate discussion about commercializing that material. But uh, still it's significant in that um, it's quite an evolution from just providing raw materials. This is actually more of a, um, I guess, value added situation. Well, it is value added and of course uh, this is helps with corrosion. Can you just give us a few <coughs> few seconds of an overview about how significant this graphene uh, commercialization process is? Uh, sure. Well, first of all, graphene, what we like about graphene and coatings is it has a massive uh, improvement in performance. So particularly with anti-corrosion, graphene can outperform currently used materials like chrome in the, that are used in these coatings now. So the ultra-thin and impermeable nature of graphene plus its electronic or its uh, electrical conductivity allows it to uh, outperform a lot of other materials. So you get a really big bang for your buck by putting graphene into your coating. And uh, this, this, you get a lot of leverage from that because you also only need a very, very small amount of graphene in that coating. Our, our tests have shown between uh, 0 0.1, from, from 0 0.1 up to 5%, you can get these radical increases in performance. Um, so this opens the fairly rapid uptake of graphene into what is a really large volume industry. It's worth about 120 billion a year globally, and the sector we're targeting within that is is uh, uh, worth about 10 billion a year. And of course, uh, lots of news right across the board for Talga Resources. You have an agreement for printed battery development in the UK. Can you tell us a little bit more about this deal? Uh, sure, we're doing work. We've essentially split our materials and energy division up so that some of the energy uh, products can take on uh, or be accelerated and flexible printed ultra thin batteries are needed for wearable technologies that are, are booming right now and um, set to grow very, very rapidly. So batteries that are much thinner than the current metal ones that are flexible and can, uh, can be charged and be part of a, a flexible solution for all sorts of devices. Um, need something ultra thin and graphene suits that. So we've done a deal with uh, a company in the UK to start um, developing their battery technology using our materials and so that will be a really good test bed actually for that material to be used in other sorts of uh, batteries and other sorts of products as well. Um, and that, uh, that's just one of about four major um, sort of initiatives we've got in the battery space. And of course, your shareholders are responding very favorably to your news flow here, up over 35% yep. since the new year. I understand, of yep. course, you're going to be speaking at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit in Toronto, May 15th and 16th. What should investor intel audience members anticipate you speaking about? Uh, well, because it's a Clean Tech conference, there was going to be a focus, I guess, on, on the environmental and, and ecological uh, side of graphene in product use. So um, this is actually a major driver for some of these graphene products. For example, in coatings, there's a lot of toxic materials that are used. And by using graphene, you can not only get better performance, but you can use a water-based system instead of an organic solvent-based system, for example. So there's lots of clean tech applications for graphene that maybe aren't so apparent. And so while I'm there, that's, that's the sort of thing I, I want to focus on to uh, fit in with Investor Intel's conference. And of course, Talbo Resources has a very talented board and management team. And with your announcement of your new chair, Mr. Terry Stinson, can you tell us a little bit more about his background? Uh, sure, yeah. Terry uh, joined us as, as chairman recently. It's a very practical 
uh, move towards the to suit our commercialising sort of space in, with graphene. So uh, Terry's currently the CEO of a group called Orbital. Uh, Orbital has uh, just recently announced a hundred and twenty million dollar uh, deal with Boeing Corp uh, on um, on drone technologies and, and engine technologies. Terry's actually got uh, multi decade experience in the commercialisation of technologies and, and engineering of of new products. He's worked with uh, Siemens. He's worked with very major groups and a lot of the OEMs um, in the automotive sector. Um, so Terry brings a lot of uh, in the trench experience on the commercialisation of products, and that's where Talga's at now. That we are a vertically integrated mine to process to graphene product company. So the the pointy end of that on the commercial end of those products, um, he brings vast experience to us, and it's a very practical and uh, a good appointment for us. Well, I'm very interested to see what you announce next. And speaking of that, is there anything you could share with us about your upcoming next two quarters? Because you've had a lot of news flow in the last just month and a half. Uh, yeah, and certainly that follows you know, over the Christmas period being a bit quiet while things build up, and uh, I guess there's, there's uh, uh, quite a lot of developments. Uh, we have threatened a, a major resource upgrade for, for the Vitangi uh, project. We have announced that we're doing some things with some of our cobalt assets and uh, you know, expect some, some updates on that at some point uh, soon. Um, we have, of course, these graphene products. Uh, we have four of them in the construction, in the battery, in the composites, and the, um, uh, the, the coating sector. Um, so you can expect some of those sectors to have some news about testing programs as well as potentially um, other sort of commercial deals. But um, right now we've got a couple of those areas that uh, we need to release some news about prototype testing and things like that. So they're the sorts of, uh, I guess it's pretty broad across all the activities of the company. Um, it is a really, really active time right now and there should be uh, quite a lot uh, happening between now and when I see you in Toronto in May. And of course, between the commercialization of graphene, which undoubtedly your shareholders are thrilled about, uh, we're being told that cobalt is right now where rare earths were in 2009. And of course, Talga has cobalt. Can you talk to us about your cobalt project? Uh, yeah, in uh, 2012, when we bought uh, Tech, uh, actually the Canadian subsidiary of Tech, to pick up some of our Swedish assets, one of the deposits that uh, was a cobalt copper gold uh, project, and it had about 105 historic drill holes in it, and a lot of that core is still available. It was drilled back in the 70s and 80s. So it's, it's known as Sweden's uh, most significant cobalt deposit, and we always figured that was part of the battery megatrend. So we, we made sure we picked that up and we've nurtured it. We put a few holes into it in 2014 and confirmed some of the numbers on it. And then recently we were drilling for graphite uh, late last year and we accidentally hit uh, on one of our conductors uh, 85 meters of mixed copper, cobalt and gold. And this has now given us, um, I guess, a, a view that that whole district is significantly cobalt enriched or cobalt fertile. And so we've been doing uh, a bit of work to look at our current ground holdings and how much cobalt lurks within it basically around. So totally separate to the graphite projects, but in the same area. So we, we just have an emerging sort of cobalt um, mega project, frankly, uh, in the area that we, we are working on. And we want to work that up at the moment and decide what it's worth before deciding uh, whether to keep it within the company or do something else with it. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your update. We look forward to seeing you soon in Toronto. Thanks, Tracy. Appreciate it. Cheers.